Praise Yah's family of Yah. It's the Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Great is our Yah. Greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lively stones. Come on, lively stones. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us greet one another as a family in the beauty of holiness.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Yeah, so it's the dead season. Hallelujah. Let him prune and cut away and clean and purge and purify our hearts. Hallelujah. He's deserving of our worship and we glorify you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. We will enter your gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We will enter your courts with praise. Hallelujah. We will say that this is the day that Yah has made. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah.
Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, who has brought you a land of Mitzrayim, now thousands of slavery. You have no the mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likes of that, which is yonder above, which is the earth beneath, which is the waters under the earth. You know, bow down to them, nor serve them. For I am Yahweh your Elohim, I'm jealous El. This is your crookedness of the fathers on the children, third and third or fourth of those who hate me. But show no commitment to the thousands of those who love me and my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh your Elohim to naught. For Yahweh does not learn to punish who brings him to naught. Remember the Shabbat set apart. Six days we will do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Elohim. In it you want to do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your children within your gates. For six days you have the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and the rest of the seventh day. Therefore, all Yahweh the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear falseness against your neighbor, you do not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbors. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? Hope so. At least we're in the land of the living. You know, right? Hallelujah. Yah is good, isn't he? Most magnificent, Abba Yah, you alone are worthy of all praise. So, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the magnificent name of Yahshua HaMashiach. ask you to bless our ears this morning. Open our minds, our hearts, and our conscience to be pliable to your word. These sayings continue to seep deep down in our hearts. Grant your servant the utterance that I might be able to speak with clarity, Father, to help your people in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. To help us to be the symbols and the lights into the goyims of the world, as well as Israel. Speak to us these truths so we can glorify and magnify your name. We thank you for the impalement. We thank you for the resurrection. We thank you because our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we're forever in grateful and forever in debt. And we thank you, Father. You are longer worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. Speak to us your truth. In the magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. You may be seated. All right. Y'all comfortable in here? You to, needs to, yeah. Well, brother Robert in. Hey, you, you think we need to add two more? I'm asking you, you the expert. Mm. All right. Do you remember how I did during Tabernacles with the AC? Was it pushing it or did we need two more? We need six then. So we need, okay. All right. Lord to the king. Y'all's yeah, good, ain't he? All right. Well, first I got to give honor to my enemies because if it wasn't for you we wouldn't have the motivation the self-determination and the drive to continue to live a righteous life I mean hey you gotta send a shout out man it says honor all men don't it so you gotta honor enemies too hmm? and I pray that you continue to be a damn good enemy too so that way we can still have the self-determination the motivation and the drive to serve y'all because if it wasn't for you we wouldn't know how true the scriptures is in it you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake glory to the king the only way you get hated is you got to live something if you ain't living nothing you don't have to worry about being hated you ever notice when you was in the world soaking yourselves in the world immersing yourselves in the world running to the same excess of rioting uh, as the gentiles did nobody bother you or trouble you now you're over here set apart. And did y'all white people even know y'all been classified as black Hebrew Israelites? <laughs> y'all didn't know that? Hey, y'all must have put that uh, sunscreen SFP30 on and they saw y'all through them infrared lenses and they classified everybody as black Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> 
I tell you, man, it's, it's off the chain, isn't it? Satan is in full swing doing exactly what he's supposed to do, isn't he? But today, um, hopefully this message right here will bring some serious edification. I'm going to tell you right now uh, that you're going to have to listen to it two or three times. It's just going to be that way. It's not that you're going to be able to, you'll be able to retain. You know what I mean? Some at the present time. But how many times you go back and listen to the message and you hear something again that you never really pay, to, you know, pay attention before because at that time, y'all, at the Ruach was hitting you where the focus needed to be at. Then you go back and you listen again, and then he hits you in another area where the focus need to be at, all right? That's how wonderful his word is. He can sit there and give us one word to many diversities of group of people, and it impacts everybody. Hallelujah. Because y'all is good all the time, and all the time he's good. Hallelujah. All right, above all my teachers, I've acted wisely for your testimonies. Witnesses are my meditation. And my enemies really get mad at that one right there. Because I'm basically telling them I'm wiser than all y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Somebody got to be wise. Hallelujah. All right. Now, we know that the Hasatan, one of his main titles, is being accusers of the brethren, right? All right. You know I often talk about the courts. I've been putting emphasis on the, on the courts and stuff, the courts and stuff, and, and how that he has legal right to actually come against us and attack us, but yet and still he can't prevail. You know what I mean? He can only make life a, you know, a little difficult and stuff, but he can't prevail because uh, Yahshua has already overcome for us. And what we need to do is learn how to walk in that vein of, of being, you know, overcomers. Are right, you following me? All right, so undivided attention. I heard a loud voice saying from Shemaim, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Yah and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, where is he at? He's cast down. He's cast down. Which accused them before Yah. How often does he do this? So he doesn't rest then, right? He accuses us how often? I'm going to continue to repeat a few phrases now and then because it has to sink down in your heart. You need to know that the adversary accuses you before Yah all the time. Y'all hear that? All of the time. Now, while he is busy up accusing us, the assembly before Yah, his demonic spirits are busy working on you. That's how you have all these thoughts, sorrows, Heaviness, guilt, shame, condemnation. These are the, this is his other little side of his army that he uses to attack the assembly. All right? So, how many of us have heard Satan's lying voice in our hearts? And the rest of you, you just made it on You've already arrived. Hmm? You've already there. In your hearts, what it means is, when you you know when something is going on a thought or something is going on you can feel it in your body it manifests it or what the scripture is causing your reins okay and now how many of us have heard Satan's voice in our conscious I told you it's pretty easy to discern as well as the rule because the ruach uses a still small voice and you know and but but Satan he uses your voice can you imagine if he was talking to me in Chase voice I'll be like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> are you following me? So he uses what you're familiar with. People are in bondage to the lies that they believe. Now, Satan is persistent in his lies towards us because he knows that if he continues to save them to us, we will eventually believe them. Now, you have to realize, a lot of uh, assemblies, churches, mosques, that false satanic religion of Christianity, they would literally have adopted a hands-off attitude speaking about Satan and his attitude and, and his attacks and his wiles and his schemes and, and everything else. You know the reason why? It keeps the people oppressed, it keeps them coming. You know there's people out there that charge people thousands of dollars just to do one deliverance session? 
They're there, I tell them. They charge money to get delivered. Can't believe that. Hmm? And so if they know if they just leave Satan alone somehow, some way, if they don't talk about him much, their philosophy is that they don't give him glory. Well, y'all sure talked about him all the time. Actually oppose his kingdom. That's the one thing that we need to constantly be doing. And of course, the best way to oppose his kingdom is to keep you informed of his wiles. Hallelujah. So when you give in to his accusations, you will be robbed of freedom. Did you hear that? So he constantly bombards the mind, constantly keeps up the pressure, hoping that you will succumb to it and sin. Are you following me? And, and then the whole purpose of that is to rob you of freedom because as soon as you sin, it brings in a whole plethora of other unclean spirits. And now you have something else you have to concentrate on and fight and war against. Are you following me? So he's busy. Remember, he accuses us before Yah day and night. Now, Yah intends for you, his people, to enjoy the here and now, here in his life. You understand that? Well, you, you say often, how in the world can I enjoy this life when I got so much hell going on? Well, James told us, submit yourself to Yah, resist the devil, and he'll flee. And the way you res submit yourself to Yah is first by confessing, repenting, and admitting. Because remind you, Satan is only going to attack you where you're most vulnerable. And somewhere, some way, somehow, wherever he has legal grounds, he'll bring it in. You may not even know. Could have been something in your line. Could have been something you've done 15 years ago. Are you following me? Hmm? How many of you men are homosexuals? You don't ever get attempted in that area, do you? You never get attacked in that area, do you? I better not see y'all watching no mother man's ass. Now, it sounds crazy. You follow me? But, but think about that. So, guess what? You don't have to ever worry about having unbridled lust in that area, do you do it? But believe it or not, there have been men that's been molested that actually have to deal with those temptations. And Satan, through that legal ground, which was un illegal, will use that to bring thoughts and temptations into a man's mind to continue and then try to make him think that he's actually a homosexual when he's truly not. You see what I mean? Now that temptation is just as real as any other temptation. So since if you ain't never been molested before, you ain't got to worry about that temptation because chances are it, is not, it doesn't apply to you. You, can, you know, he knows good and damn well he can't tempt me with a man. I get more tempted by a popsicle stick. Are you following? That's just an analogy, an example to show you how legal grounds can come in anywhere and don't show up until a little bit later on. Are you following? We're going to be in Zechariah. We're going to read 3, 1 through 10 in the scriptures to give some comprehension here, okay? And he showed me Yahushua, the high priest standing before the messenger of Yahweh. You hear that? Zechariah said, this is what he showed me. Look what he's looking at. And Satan standing at his right hand to be an adversary to him. All right? Don't this sound like the courtroom? Mind you, Zechariah is seeing this, right? And Yahweh said unto Satan, y'all rebuke you. Satan, Yahweh, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. You get that? So now we have the actual father himself and the Messiah rebuking Satan. You hear that? Is this not the brand plucked from the fire? And Yahushua was dressed in what kind of garments? Filthy garments. And was standing before the messenger. Now, let's go into this for a second, okay? What we have is the courtroom seen in Israel. Yah the Father is the righteous judge. The prosecuting attorney is the Hasatan. The defense attorney is Yahshua, Jesus. All this is taking place right there to Zechariah's sin. The accused defendant is Yahshua, 
the high priest who represents all the Yah's people. Because see, he's also going back in, 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 into the Moedims to let you know what's going on here, okay? Because remember, the high priest, right? He could go into the Holy of Holies how many times in a year? Once in a year. All right, and he had to go through many ceremonial cleanses. Is it all right? All right? And he had to make atonement for himself, atonement for the people, the nation, and atonement for the temple. He had to make an all atonements. All right? And he answered and spoke those to those who stood before him saying, look at this, this is the most high. Remove the filthy garments from him. So who's the only one that can remove our filthy garments? Remember we sang that song, Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? So y'all was the one who took off the filthy garments and y'all was the one who put on the clean garments. And he said to him, look what he said now. Look what all is compassed with these garments right here. See, I have removed your Guilt. I have removed. Who removed your guilt? Yeah. Who removed your guilt? Yeah. Who removed your guilt? Y'all yeah. removed your guilt. You hear that? You see, one of the hardest things to do in this life right here is to get people to walk in victory when you have a memory of your guilt. But Zechariah said, I saw this scene up in heaven play out right before me. And I saw Yahoshua had filthy garments on, and now he's clean because y'all had them removed from him. You get that? So now the garments is that you're walking in now, when you have clean garments, that means you, have a no, you are no longer associated with the guilt and the stain that comes with dirty garments. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Now, it's one thing to acknowledge that, but it's another thing to walk in and believe it. Because remember, there's an old mind that ain't wearing garments. Are you following me? There's an old mind that's naked, ain't wearing garments, that has a memory of all this. Are you following me? So there's a lot going on up here. There's a hell of a lot going on up here. Are you following me? And even if you have a memory of the things that you have done in the past, and now you are born anew, and y'all has put clean garments on you. Are you following me? Can nobody bring up that past to condemn you unless they are agent of Satan? Are you following? Don't the, the apocryphal teach us approach not a man that has turned from sin knowing that we all are guilty? Huh? So he says, I removed your guilt from you and shall put costly robes on you. Them the kingly and the priestly robes, all right? And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. Then they put a clean turban or miter on his head. And they put garments on him. And the messenger of Yahweh stood by. That's the angel of the Most High, right? So Zechariah is seeing all this play out, right? All this play out right before him. All right? And the messenger of Yahweh witnessed to Yahushua saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, if... We're going to go into this because this is very key right here. All right? Because there's something that comes with a change of clothes. Are y'all listening? There's something that comes with a change of clothes. All right? You were filthy and unclean. And now you've been washed and you're clean. So with them garments, there's a responsibility that comes with wearing clean garments, clean clothing. All right, so let's see what this is. He says, if you are walking my ways, not your ways, because remember, our ways are unjust. Is that right? No, it's predicated upon the if. If you are walking my ways, and if you guard my duty, safeguard, and then you shall rule my house and also guard my horse. You hear this? And I shall give you access among these standing here. Now listen, Yahushua, the high priest, you and your companions. Who set before you? The companion is all of Israel. For they are men of symbol. 
Are you following me? Men of symbol meaning now that we're men of notoriety. We're men, because remember, all the nations, if they're going to achieve salvation, it comes first through us, the Yehudims. Is that right? So the purpose of having these clean garments is to be a witness against the whole entire world who is still having filthy garments on. And we are the ones that have to show them the way to the Messiah. We have to show them to the Father in order for them to be able to get clean. Because remember, salvation, or Yahshua, is to the Yehudim first, then unto the Gentiles of Lagoyim. Are you following me? That's the reason why the message today is all screwed up. That's why people are all twisted and warped, don't know where they're coming, where they're going. That's why today that people really truly can't walk in confidence knowing that they've been redeemed and delivered. Because all the mental gymnastics that religion plays. I mean, one minute they, they want to, to go ahead and keep giving offers and stuff because you feel bad and stuff because you can't stop sinning. And they tell you you have a license of sin, but it's all predicated upon the contract or the agreement that comes along with these clean garments. In other words, you have some obedience that has to come along, go along with wearing of these garments. Because see, you no longer represent your filthy self anymore. No, you ambassadors to the kingdom now that the garments are on. You hear this? Y'all hear this? Now listen, y'all, high priest, stand for your companions who sit before you, for they are men of symbol. For look, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. He's bringing forth his servant, the what? Branch. The branch. And in that day, declares Yahweh of hosts, you shall invite one another under the vine and under the fig tree. Under the fig tree. Now, Satan will never stop his attack on us. He will continue to point out our past faults and sins. Y'all hear that? Because that's all he got. You get it? Yah has cleansed us and changed our garments because Yahushua, our defense attorney, has never lost a case before Yahweh. Y'all hear that? He's never lost a case before Yahweh. Now, since you know he's never lost a case, that means, that means we're on the winning side every single time now. Say so could be standing right there. Hey, put yourself in the place of Yahushua. You could be standing there and Satan could bring up every single thing and guess what? Y'all will rebuke him. Why? Because of the deliverance that Yahshua has given us. The salvation. You hear that? So, when we hear that thing that he, and hear that saying all the time, he paid it all. He truly paid it all. Justified. Redeemed. Sanctified. Hallelujah. You see, the power comes when you know it. Do you hear me? When you know it. And people ask me, well, how are you so damn bold, Pastor? Because I've been re I know who I am. You understand what I mean? How often y'all heard me say that? That now who in the hell gonna sit up there and try to tell me all my sins I done did and make me feel bad? You what am I supposed to do? Go over in that corner, put a towel over my head and just weep all day long? Does that sound like somebody that it, would somebody who has overcome, would that be their response? No, nah, they would stand up toe to toe. Huh? See, because to condemn you after you've been washed is to count the blood of the covenant wherewith you were sanctified an unholy thing. Does that make sense? Don't want to go too fast. And I want people to grasp this, okay? Because Yahshua, Jesus has justified us. Now, Yahshua lives to intercede for us. You hear that? He actually lives to intercede for us. Are you following me? What he did was, was kill the last and, and overcome the last enemy, which was death. Are you following me? But in the meantime, there's a war to fight. Okay? So, key points. There's some key points here. While Satan is accusing us day and night before the Father, his demons also accuse us personally by hitting our minds with false thoughts. 
Y'all hear that? Let's look at the contrast between Satan's kingdom and Yahshua's kingdom, or Yahweh's kingdom, okay? Now, Satan, he reminds you of everything. Yahweh said, I'll throw your sins into the depths of the sea never to remember again. <laughs> Satan will continue to keep bringing accusations. Yahweh says, I've separated them as far as from the east and to the west. You getting this? You getting this? So sorrow of heart, it can work both ways. All right? Making us feel unworthy and unrighteous in Yah's sight. So, 2 Corinthians 2.11. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. So lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Satan knows if you continue to listen to him, you will begin to live out these accusations as if they were a sentence you must serve. You get that? We're talking a little courtroom strategies and procedures here. And this is not Siri Judas prudence either, okay? All right? Satan is the accuser. Not your judge. Does that make sense? See, an accusation is there to try to judge you, but he's not the judge. Does that make sense? Y'all need to get this. When the attack comes in your mind, you must remember you're a child of Yah. You must stay, you must say to yourself in your mind, I have put my trust in Yahshua. You hear that? I have literally put my trust in Yahshua. You get it? Because see, your old body has a memory of all this, heart and conscious. Are you following me? That's why the book says that if our heart condemns us, he's greater than our heart that condemns us. Is that right? So it has a memory, and, and, and you associated someone with that memory because it's part of the battleground of this mind down here, the warfare. You understand what I mean? All right, but see, it's knowing your position in the Messiah after you have met the conditions of salvation. Is that hear me? Y'all hear me? So you must remember, like Yahushua, the high priest, you have been delivered from the fire of judgment. Y'all hear this? Now make no mistake about this. I'm talking about people who take salvation serious. I'm talking about people who wars and fights and wrestles against Satan's kingdom. I'm talking about people who constantly are practicing overcoming. I'm not talking about the people who go out and just succumb to sin and lay down to it. And then they turn around and you rebuke them, you reprove them, you correct them. Say, you better not go do that. And as soon as they leave your presence, they right back in sin again. All right, we're going to hit on that and show you what's going on too, all right? You can never forget, Israel, you have been declared righteous by the Most High. You hear that? You can never forget it. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? You can never, ever forget it. All right? It's because you lacks in memory, Satan gets a foothold and get a ground and becomes even stronger and it's hard to shake him from your conscience. Are you following me? The change of our filthy garments of unrighteousness is what he, Yah, does himself and not us. After having this righteous garment, he has changed us, and this is the sole reason why we do not sin. You hear that? Because remember, the prophet said that he will give us his ruach, which would compel us to keep his commandments. Is that right? Isn't that right? So let's go back and look at something again, Israel. Look at this. Back to verse 7 in Zechariah 3. Then said Yahweh host, if you walk in my ways, and if you guard my duty, safeguard, then you shall also rule my house. Because remember, we also have a charge knowing that we're going to be over providences and ruling angels and all this, all right? It's a great responsibility coming with this righteous, clean garment. Are you following me? I mean, he's banking a lot on us. And also guard my courts. I shall give you access among these standing here. 
Now, after y'all rebuke Satan and provided our righteousness, Yahshua demands for a response of obedience daily. Somebody say daily. 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 From us to continue to walk in victory. Somebody say victory. Victory. Every day of our lives. So the purpose of this is to have daily victory every day of our lives. Are you following me? Israel, these abominations have nothing to do with Satan's defeat. I mean admonitions. Why do I get abominations? I need my glasses. These admonitions have nothing to do with Satan's defeat. He's already a defeated foe. Y'all hear that? See, he's already defeated, right? But he's acting like he's no one. Is that right? You see, all the Shemaim know he's defeated. But by the time he gets finished weighing his weighing sorrow down on you, guilt, shame, and condemnation, boy, it seems like that he done won. No, he's still acting like he won. He's still using the art of deception. And the reason why he can do that is because you won't keep in your conscience where you're at in the kingdom and the placing that Yahshua is giving you in the kingdom. Does that make sense? Every day we must keep God's charges, laws, and commandments. Unlike Satan's religion of Christianity, we cannot go around sinning freely because of grace and because we have been justified. If you do that, you'll put stains on that garment. And the only stain removal for those garments is repentance or the blood. It's the craziest thing in the world. I'll see Mother Carol Washington, she'll take some blue stuff, put it in white garments, and the stuff comes out white. Whiter than what it was when it went in there. That's it, man, that just don't make sense. Well, if that don't make sense, then I hope the blood makes sense. (laughs) Huh? I hope it makes sense. So, we must walk in obedience with God because we are the symbol of of his righteousness in this earth. That's why we continue to keep hearing sayings, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. That's why I say we are the salt of the earth. Are you following me? You get it? All right. So we must walk in obedience with Yah because we are the symbols of his righteousness and deliverance to the world. Because the world's messed up right now. Critical differences. Y'all ready for this? Critical differences. Need to know these. So, what's the difference between the devil's accusations and the Holy Spirit conviction? Ain't that a good question? Because sometimes we find ourselves confused on these things, right? So what is the difference between devil's accusations and the Holy Spirit convictions? Because there's a difference. What makes it hard is because they both carry the same feeling. They both carry the same emotions. One genders to righteousness, the other would gender to death. All right? I can tell you right now, they both make you feel very bad. The sorrow and the feeling of them both are the same. The critical differences between the two is knowing your response. 2 Corinthians 7 9 says, Now I rejoice. Not that you are made sorry. Hear that? But that you sorrowed to what? Every single correction, every single instruction, every single rebuke, every single admonishment that comes to you from one of y'all's righteous men is not there to make you feel bad. You already feel bad enough. Neither is it there for you to be standing up on the inside when this correction and rebuke comes. Are y'all hearing me? Y- are y'all listening? This is very tedious right here, all right? The ideal of all that is that you will realize and be able to see what this sin, iniquity, or transgression has done rather than you insulating it and protecting it. It's for you to be able to see exactly the death that is working in you so that true repentance can work through godly sorrow because if it's godly sorrow, it's something that you will not go and return to and visit again. See, because if it's not godly sorrow, 
You've seen people, I've seen people a thousand times. They'll say, I repent, and they go away, and they go back and return to their vomit, do the same damn thing again. You know why? Because they don't comprehend and understand the death that is actually working in them. Now I rejoice, not that you are made sorry, but that your sorrow, but that you sorrow to repentance, for you were made sorry after a what kind of manner? Godly. Godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. Can you know that people actually get upset whenever you reprove them and correct them to trying to help make them more godly? Yeah, people get they get upset. Yeah, they do. They get upset really bad. The whole entire purpose of correction. And rebuke is not to make you feel bad. You already feel bad. The purpose is you are, uh, the purpose is you are really going to repent and walk in the light. Or are you going to choose to walk in death? You have a choice sitting before you today. You can choose to walk in light or you can choose to walk in death. Like I said before, I'm mean, even getting ahead of my nose. <laughs> I've corrected and rebuked people many times. And without fail, they say, I will never go back. We missed the R in that um, uh, area. I will never go back to that sin again. And no sooner as they are removed from my presence, they return to the sin again and think I, I will never find out. Do you know that the majority of the time when I find out stuff, the scriptures already says that he got some birds up there? That they go tell stuff? Are you in that? I can tell you these kind of people love walking in death because they have chosen it. Now we're going to, have to make some sense of this then, right? 2 Corinthians 7 10 from the King James. For godly sorrow. For what kind of sorrow? Godly sorrow. That's why I said a lot of these people who so called have repented of sin, I ain't, and I ain't never seen this kind of repentance before. Well, you just say a few words. And then all of a sudden, you got a smile on your face. My godly sorrow, it was ugly. It was crying. It was, it was snotting. It was bawling, squalling. I was bent over. I had pains in me. They got this PGA golf tour type of repentance today. I'm serious. Everybody golf clapping their way to the kingdom. But godly sorrow, work of the repentance, to salvation or to deliverance, not to be repented of. You hear that? In other words, if you're really truly sorrowful for your sin, iniquity, and transgression, if you're really truly sorrowful, I guarantee you won't go back and visit again. Never again in your life. Not that sin. No, you won't. Are y'all listening? You will never go back and visit that sin. You know why? Because the sorrow that you experience that comes from godly sorrow, you know it hurts y'all and it hurts you too much. And you're not about to revisit that pain again. Does that make sense? There's no way in hell you going back over that again. Now you see the reason why people, fools make a light of sin. And fools mock knowledge. You get it? So what the fools do and the fools say in the heart, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, God, I can just go ahead and continue on and say a few words. That's the same type of attitude that King Saul had. He made light of the commandments of the Most High Yah. And it caused the Most High Yah to despise and reject him. So God is sorrow. Work of repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work of what? This means if you are truly sorry for sins, iniquities, and transgressions you have committed, you will not return to them again. Sorrow of conviction leads to repentance and life. Y'all hearing this? If you continue to do the same things over and over again, we have no choice but to remove you. Why? Because 
that wasn't a godly sorrow that worketh repentance to not be repented of again. Now you have showed and displayed after being corrected, after being instructed, after being reproved, that you really truly did not sorrow to deliverance and sorrow unto salvation. What you did was try to deceive everybody by going through the emotions and you are really truly walking in, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. See the difference? One genders towards salvation, the other one worketh death. You get it? See, I don't rejoice when you feel bad, yet I rejoice that sorrow would lead you to repentance and knowledge of the truth. And finally, you would be free in Messiah. So there's a big question right here, okay? Big question. How do you know the kind of sorrow you are experiencing? Does your thoughts reflect truth or error? Do you feel stupid, guilty, worthless, or dumb as hell? All right. Now, all this is going to work in reverse. Listen to this. Those thoughts are working to condemn you in the reverse frame of mindset. See, the way we commonly think about this, the feeling of stupid and guilty and condemned and, and all this, listen to me closely now. You see, if you feel this way and you are truly righteous, then you should know that you are no longer guilty. Not because you hadn't been guilty. But when you're walking in righteousness, y'all has removed your guilt. You hear this? But you have to remember that the guilt has been removed. And Satan is banking on you not remembering. You get it? Because you have been justified. You are no longer condemned because there is no condemnation. You get it? There is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the what? You are not worthless because Jesus gave his life for you. You get it? So, you, you know, the devil in mind says, oh, you're just worthless, you're, you're just a piece of crap, and you're all this. But why, if you are worthless and a piece of crap, then why does the testimony of heaven have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? <laughs> See, it's being able to flip this thing and have comprehension to be able to understand how to walk in power, walk in strength, and walk in victory. It's making sense. So you couldn't be so damn worthless if Yahshua came down here and died for you. So those thoughts are working to make you be in agreement with you to bring a binding. And if you submit to those thoughts, then you're submitting to the devil. You remember how Paul made a distinction between the old man and the new man? Hmm? He said, I find in me that is in my flesh what? No good thing for to will is present with me, but to find out how to do it, I find not. Didn't he say that? At the end of it all, he thanked Yah through Yahshua. Is that right? That with his flesh, he obeyed the law of sin. Is that right? Huh? But it with his spirit, his redeemed mind, his mind full of salvation and deliverance and sanctification and justification, he obeyed the law of Yah. Is that right? See, you're not stupid because you have the mind of Messiah. Y'all hear that? See, it's all working in reverse to try to get you to be in agreement and to keep you bound. It's called psychological warfare now. It's easy for us to say, I ain't no good. I'm just a piece of shit. I can't, I can't do nothing right. I hear thing I do is wrong. I mean, yeah, I'm guilty. I'm all the time damn guilty. Everything I'm. And all that is is just working to keep you bound. And it can do it as long as you uh, believe it. You'll never have a victory. Are you following me? You'll never be able to walk in 
true confidence and the power of Yah. You get it? There is now no condemnation to them which are in what? Predicated upon the condition who walk not after the flesh. That's when there's no condemnation. When you don't give place to the flesh. But after the spirit. All right, brother St. Dabarine, chapter 30, verse 15. Everybody all right? That's good. Glory to the king. I'm going to take me a shortcut. <laughs> hey, when you have it, teacher, go ahead and read. See, I have had set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Y'all hear that? Yeah. See what's set before you, Israel? Ain't nothing changed. Still the same thing going on. See what is set before you? Come on. In that I command thee this day to love Yahweh thy Elohim. Yeah, what is the command? To love Yahweh thy Elohim. And how do you love Yahweh your Elohim? To, to walk in his way. Ah, oh, isn't that the same thing that Zechariah saw? Yes. That the Most High was up there, he was just telling Yahushua to just walk in his ways. That's the love of Yah. You hear that? Just to walk in his ways. Come on. And to keep his commandments mm -hmm. and his statutes mm -hmm. and his judgments. Come on. That thou mayest live. That you may what? May live. That you may what? May live. So anything you do outside of that is death. If we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifices of sin. But a certain fiery condemnation and judgment is going to devour the adversaries. See, you're, you're choosing, believe it or not, no matter how great the temptation is, you're choosing every single day if you're going to walk in life or in death. Either way it goes, you're going to get the fruit of it. You follow me? And believe me, you eat the fruit that you want. Oh, no, I don't. Yes, you do, too. So the ideal is to walk in the fruit of life. Isn't that right? Read on. That thou mayest live and multiply, and Yahweh thy Elohim shall bless thee. What the is way. he going to do with you? Bless thee. If you walk in his ways, if you keep his commandments, his judgments, his statues, he, he got a blessing for you. He got a blessing for you. So how many times can you be tricked to sin? How many times can you sit there and be a stage playing hypocrite and think that you're deceiving the people that are leaders in front of you when they reprove you and rebuke you and then you go out when you get from away from them thinking that, you know, I guarantee the witness of heaven is a hell of a lot brighter than the witness of man. I, I bet his eyes is a whole lot brighter and they, I bet they see everything. Why don't fear no man? Then why is it that you rather sin in front of heaven and not sin in front of man then, damn it? Uh-oh. No, it's real talk. You see what I mean? So you have got to have your mind made up. And this is what happens, the reason why for the majority of the time when people either leave or get put out of the ministry is because they know we're going to tolerate their sin. Ain't no mistake about it. This not environment conduces to sin. You get it? Why? Because we're trying to keep all our garments spotless. Trying to keep them all white as snow. We're trying to keep, what did he say he do? If you will walk in my ways, my statutes, my laws and commandments, he said, I will bless you. We want to keep the blessings of y'all upon us. Isn't that right? I mean, there was people there in Israel that rose up against Moses, Cor, Dathan, and Abiram. And boy, they had a voice that was so strong, man, that it was convincing a lot of people to the point that so much that he had a whole bunch of people on his side, not only just his family. Man, them accusations were strong. Moses said, I tell you what, we're going to find out who y'all will. See if he do a new thing. What is the new thing, Moses? He's going to swallow up the earth and send them down into the pit of life. See, the witness of the enemy is always strong. 
You remember when I, Jeremiah, come on, you the prophet of Yah, right? Spokesman of Yah. Come on, man, if you're really hearing from Yah, you're not going to tell us to submit to the Babylonians. Jeremiah said, you better submit to the Babylonians. Why, Israel? Because you've been wicked and it's time for your judgment. But man, then all of a sudden you got somebody else coming speaking a lesson. Watch this. Positive. Even though you've been wicked as hell. You want to hear that message of Jeremiah saying, hell, now you don't want to hear that message. He's speaking positive. Hananiah said, I'll shut up. Pow, Jeremiah, I'm the prophet of y'all. Jeremiah said, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> he ain't been sent by y'all. Don't let him deceive you. What? You the one deceived, telling us to submit to the Babylonians. We're going to conquer the Babylonians. No, you ain't either. <laughs> Boy, Hananiah, and I, which testimony would you took? Oh boy, you better think on these things. Whose testimony would you took? They both in Israel. <laughs> you don't want to hear nothing bad like go submit to the Babylonians. That's like telling us to submit to these Hatfield and McCoys up here. <laughs> we'll be sitting up there now. Wait a minute. See, how, that's pretty strong. Come on, man, all you Negroes submit to the KKK. What? <laughs> Are you out of your damn mind? <laughs> you got to bring this thing around for real, man. That's what Jeremiah was up against. See, so the accuser has a strong voice that if it were possible, he would deceive the very elect. Hmm? Better be careful. Read, bro, son. Shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. So no matter where you go to possess it, if you walk in his ways, his statutes, his laws, his commandments, the promise is he will bless you. What are you going to bless? The labor of your hands. What if you're lazy? You won't get no blessings. <laughs> yeah, y'all going to bless us. I'm waiting on his blessing. Well, damn it, he said he's going to bless the labor of your hands. Get off your ass and go work. Y'all see how it is? People, people y'all got to get, come on, get out of this stupor. Satan playing for real. Read, read, teach. But if thine heart turn away. If your heart do what? Turn away. What do you think sin is trying to do? Always seeking to turn you up. Wait, you follow me? Remember, the deceitfulness of sin. Always seeking to turn you away. Come on. So that thou wilt not hear. So that you will not what? Hear. Because sin hardens the heart. It hardens the ears so you can't hear. Remember what Isaiah said? They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, they can't hear. They can't have a heart, but they can't perceive. And then Yahshua even quoted the prophet Yeshayahu. For this people's heart is wax gross. You hear that? Why? How does your heart wax gross? Because you're entertaining too much sin. That make it sense? Come on. But shall be drawn away and worship other mighty ones and serve them. Y'all hear that? So the whole purpose and idea is to draw you away to worship other mighty ones, other Elohims, other gods, and serve them and not the, the king. Read on. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish. You're going to surely what? Perish. That's what you're watching. You're watching people perish in their sins. Today I ought to call them justified sins because they believe they're justified in their sin. You think about the religion of Christianity. They, think, they, they literally got you believing you can go out and commit sin because you're justified and you don't have to repent for it. Don't listen. No, I wouldn't advise listening to it because it may, the devil may get you. It may be something. You may be an unresolved sin you have in you that you haven't resolved yet and there may be something your flesh may want to hear and next thing you know, you're going to lie on y'all. Right. Yes, sir. Come on. And that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land 
whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Man, think about that. Who's recording? Who's got the record? Read. That I have set before you life. What did he set before you? Life. <laughs> and what? And death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Choose what? Choose life. I mean, even in this multiple choice, he gives you the, 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 the start. He gives you the answer. That will help you pass the test. Choose life. Come on, man. Come on, woman. Just choose it. You good? That thou, both thou and thy seed may live. That, that thou mayest love. Oh, 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 that's key. You choose life so that you and your descendants shall live. You can tell that it had to be the favor or the grace of Yah to be upon all of us that are sitting here. No, you, I'm serious. You know the reason why I say that? Because my natural family on both sides of my bloodline ain't done a damn thing to deserve the favor or grace of y'all. So he had to choose us out of due season, no doubt about it. You think about it. If there was at least one in my family that tried to lead us to y'all, or lead me to y'all, would we have heard? Would we have heard? You see what I mean? So the idea is to be able to walk in these ways, and when you have seed, you teach your seed to walk in these ways, and then it, it perpetually goes down the line that everybody has more fear of y'all than the fear of man and the fear of Satan. They'll be motivated to actually, to want to obey Yah. It'll be a joy and a delight to obey Yah. You hear me? I mean, I'm watching a slow change amongst even the youth. And, um, they're, 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 they're looking at this. They'll, they'll go out there and see the world and go, ooh, ugh, ah, that's good. It's good when your face contorts like that. That's good because you have to think that when it's time for you to raise up seed in your family line, do you want him, them to have that same optics as the world? Do you want them to be just like the people in the world? Do you want them to be just like the people you work with? Do you want them to have the same attitude, the same mindset? Oh, do you want them to turn out like that? The answer is no. So that's why it profits us to walk in the fear of Yahweh always. Hallelujah. Come on. That thou mayest love Yahweh thy Elohim, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. Y'all hear that? The whole idea is to cleave to Yah and to stay next to him as much as possible. Come on. For he is thy life. He is our what? Life. He is our what? Life. He is our what? Life. Come on. And the length of thy day. Y'all hear that? He is your life and the length of your what? You remember there's this old passage in the scripture says, be sure your sin will find you out. And fools make a mock at sin. See, when you sit down and practice sin, it looks like you're getting by with it. Till one day it got you. You can get away from whoremonging for a long time until age comes. Hmm? You can even get away with murder for a long time until your day of death comes. And you die early. For every transgression and for every sin, there's a just recompense or reward. Notice just, meaning totally righteous. It's a total righteous payment for it. 
Are y'all hear me, Israel? Yes, sir. You good? That thou mayest dwell in the land which Yahweh swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Now, isn't it sad that if it wasn't, if it wasn't for our people being so damn rebellious, we could still be in that land today? Enjoying the blessings, the fruits, and everything. You good? Thoughts that persistently drive you into the ground, constantly feeling sorrow, are thoughts that are falsely accusing you. You must submit yourself to Yah. The problem is, we are having today, is that people are not choosing to submit themselves to Yah. How do you submit yourself to Yah? By repenting. Well, I can't remember doing anything. Repent! Why are you trying to figure it out? I don't know if I've ever been a part of that. Why are you still being tempted? When you're tempted and enticed, you're only drawn away because of your own lust. Stop blaming everything about it, trying to figure it out. That's how you submit to y'all. All, them, all those answers, all those statements of justification to remain the same way you are. Trying to justify yourself saying that you don't need the blood. And your condition remains. This making any sense? Everybody all right? 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess, don't this big if. That, that if is something else, isn't it? If. <laughs> What do you say, Elder? If, 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 if. if. Elder said, if all over. If, predicated upon what? Your freedom of choice. If we confess our sins. That's the problem, to trying to get you to get to the if to confess. I don't know why Satan beat me up. I don't know why I feel so bad. I don't repent. I don't know why. I just can't get it. Repent, damn it. I, 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 I ain't did nothing. Damn it. If you ain't figured out you ain't did nothing, you were born in sin and shaping in iniquity and in sin that your mother conceived you. So damn it, repent. <laughs> it's the hardest thing in the world to get people to submit to y'all. See how we rationalize? It's the hardest thing in the world to get people to submit to y'all. Know it all. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us of what? So if you go back to Zechariah, didn't, didn't the father cleanse him? Yeah, he did. He removed him. Submit yourself to y'all's repentance. Once you repent, you are cleansed. Why? Because the blood is there. The blood is being applied. Stop down running around. I'm, I just, I'm just condemned. Damn, man, you can't live without condemnation, can you? Well, I, if I take away condemnation, I wouldn't know how to feel. Boy, you are jacked up. You sure you trust in y'all for your salvation? That's what it really boils down to, isn't it? Now, get on with the newness of life. True repentance removes the sorrow. Y'all hear that? True repentance removes the sorrow. You hear that? True repentance removes the guilt. True repentance removes the shame. Now remember Mary, Mary Madeline? Remember when people said, well, if he's a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this is. You think she cared about what they said? She was too busy getting clean. Y'all remember Mary and Martha? Who was cumbersome about with so much business? And who had chosen the good work? Ah, oh, shut up. Don't y'all wake up. <laughs> y'all something else. 
Anyway, I was going to walk out of here, but since I'm almost done, I might as well just finish. <laughs> Throw my hands up in the air and say, Father, I'm done. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of an unclean people. <laughs> Glory to the king. Accusations and being overcome by them will lead you to I mean, the accusation is he keeps bombarding you with the same old thing over and over again. What do you think temptation is? It's a thought. It either comes through the heart or the conscience. And with that comes a feeling. See? An example. If you're a whoremonger and you can't stop being one because you're driven by that spirit, then you have never repented. Why? Because we go back to what the letter had said. Godly sorrow, worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh what? Death. So the truth is you just want to live and abide in death. Choose you this day. Choose you this day. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. You see, everything is about choosing to submit. Choosing to submit to Yah in repentance so that you do not have to sin. Y'all hear that? 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commit a sin, he that, now y'all want to know who the devil is, don't you? Why do you think I don't have no problem calling people devils? You're a devil. <laughs> You're a devil. You're a child of hell. I know what the hell you are. <laughs> Y'all ain't never heard me talking like that? What are you doing waiting for the devil when he's sitting right there in front of you? He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose was the son of Yah manifested that he might destroy the what? The works of the what? The devil. And the only way you can destroy the works of the devil is through repentance by applying the blood. Whosoever is born of Yah, whosoever is born of Yah, how many people born of Yah? Wow. Look at all these people born of Yah. Guess what they do? They do not commit sin. What? No, see, you can't say you ain't never sinned, but you ain't going out here trying to be driven to be practicing sin. If you're born of Yah, you do not commit sin. No, if you're born of Yah. Ain't none of y'all seen me sin. Come on, name a sin. Boy, it's quiet, isn't it? It's quiet, boy. You can hear a rat piss on cotton. <laughs> now, I wonder if we can parade you up here. See if we have some true witnesses. See, what we're doing is testing the boast. So if you're born of God, you do not commit what? For his seed remain in him. Who's in you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you can't tell me that you're born again and you want to go out here and practice living in sin, trying to make the greater one in you sin. Why do you think he said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit? Whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Don't he say that? And he cannot sin. What? Well, he cannot sin. Because he is born of God. So now we're seeing who's really truly born again. I remember I preached a message about people shouting in iniquity. Every feast day people come shouting in iniquity. You know they're full of sin and iniquity and trans. Look at them. Look at them. They're going to get their dance on though. Look at them. I said, y'all going to take them shoes off your feet? 
They be here dancing like they, just like every, wheat and tares. Huh? We just, they appear before you as my people. And then one day your sin finds you out. Well, only y'all can judge me. Yeah, that's right. That's why he told us that. That's why he told us that a spiritual man is judged by no man, but he judges all things. Yeah, that means he's got a judgment in Shemaim, and he also got a judgment for you on this earth. Uh oh. So people wear these stupid tattoos and everything. Only y'all can judge me. You already judge. Y'all get it? Don't let this, man, don't let Satan fool y'all. So whosoever is born of y'all do not commit sin, for a seed remain in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of y'all. In this, the children of y'all are manifested. They are clearly seen. And the children of the devil. Whosoever do of not righteousness is not of y'all. How hard, how hard can that be? Ain't hard to figure it out. Well, we, we just don't know it's hard. What? No, you don't know it's hard. I know it's hard, damn it. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, the Bible tells you to judge not. Yeah, unless you be judged. I ain't got to worry about being judged as a whoremonger. You know why? I ain't no whoremonger. I mean, look online. I got people judge me all over the place. Did the judgment stick? No. I still come out bold as a lion. I ain't got no corner to go run and hide in. You know the reason why I ain't got no corner to run and hide in? Because his seed remaineth in me. That's the same testimony you need to have. Hey, ain't you afraid, Pastor Dow, somebody coming in and testifying against you? No. The only people that can testify against me is a false witness. So why should I be afraid of them? In this, the children of Yah's manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of Yah, neither he that loveth not his brother. Y'all hear that? And we know that all things, Romans 8, 28, work together for the good of them that love Yah, to them who are the called according to whose purpose? For whom he did foreknow. Somebody raise your hand and say, Y'all knew me. He foreknew you. He did predestinate. That's crazy, isn't it? Think about that. You know the rotten scoundrel you've been. Isn't that crazy? Chase, you, that's why he's standing up so much. All right, now. <laughs> Chase, I'm just telling him, like, good God of mercy, I've been redeemed. I know where he bought me from. <laughs> Can you imagine him being born and then y'all say, yep, yep, I'm going, yep, yep, I'm going to save him. Why do you think you're here? Why do you think you are listening to me by the sound of your voice? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you already know I'm a preacher because you're listening. That goes for you too, my enemies. You just ain't got no faith. Faith come out here. Hear them come out of the word of Yah. How can they preach? Except they be sent. Who sent them? Y'all did. Oh, you just want some accolades. What, this walk is accolades? What would you say, Some after we got back from Mexico? Want to go back? No? 
Want to stay too long? Want to stay a little while longer? Yeah. All this hell going on over here. There's a lot of hell going on, wasn't it? Man. Man, we got to go back to that. These sea turtles are looking good. <laughs> the stingray looking even better, even though I don't want no parts of him. I'd rather snorkel with a stingray than a deal with an unrighteous saint. <laughs> that was funny. Me and Summer were snorkeling in the, in the water, right? And, um, and, and we seen the little fish, and I said, let's go over here. We went over there. All of a sudden, he reaches over to me. She says, look, stingray. I said, I put her behind me. Get him. I started. I had the camera. I was going to go, go, go. <laughs> she looks at me and said, why are you doing that? It's just a stingray. I said, that's the same damn thing to kill that man. She go, uh-uh, I don't know, no, no, no. And then we told her, the, the guest over there that was next to us about the stingray. Oh, yeah, they killed Steve Irvin. She go. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why my behavior is like that. <laughs> she know I love her because I put, I put myself between her and the stingray. Then we turn around there and get out in the damn ocean on one of them little things and stuff. Next thing you know, we jump in the water and then there's another stingray three times the size of the one I saw. I said, this got to be bad right here, man. <laughs> Big old thing like this. Got it on camera too. And that's bad that you're ready to swim with the stingrays <laughs> I'll take my chance. <laughs> Y'all all right? Woo. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called, and whom he called them, he also justified, and whom he justified them, he also glorified. Basically, in a nutshell, why don't you just walk in the justification that the Messiah has already given you? If God be for you, who can be against you? Let's walk in the freedom and liberty of keeping his ways, his statutes, his laws, his commandments, and be blessed. What's wrong with that? Anybody know what's wrong with that? See, many of you walk around being defeated in your mind. Go back and listen to this message again and again until these sayings sink deep down in your heart. Stop with the mental gymnastics. Well, he just won't leave me alone. Is he supposed to leave you alone? Not right now. He's got a time appointed. So since he won't leave you alone, bug the hell out of him. Get some fighting. Does that make sense? Go get some fighting, you man. Glory to the king. This was a good message. Why are y'all standing up? Ain't nobody told y'all stand up. Sit down. Y'all, man, y'all must want this thing to be over. <laughs> Satan, Satan must want y'all to be this thing, man. Good, good, good. Stand up. <laughs> Rush him up, get him up out of here before he say something else. Remember, the prophets command to open up their mouth wide. Why? Because what it does is when the word comes forth, it opens your understanding. 
That's why Satan is always afraid of the word and he's always trying to put out the word because he don't want you to hear the truth. I know y'all wasn't doing that for that, so don't feel bad. Next thing you know, you're going to be condemning me. Hallelujah. It ain't going to work either. Glory to the king. All right, how many of y'all people getting baptized? Did y'all bring y'all baptism clothes? You bought them this time, huh? They said, we bought them this time. And that's something. Sit there and watch these people walk on that creek rock with no shoes. I'd rather be putting an Iron Maiden than walking in the creek gravel. <laughs> Good mercy me. That thing is, that's suffering. But they can do it. So we got how many? Four? How many? One, two. Put your hands up and get baptized. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Five of them. Okay, what time you kid? Oh, da, 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 da. Mm, that time we get there, get changed. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's say 215, baptism at the creed. Now, is that good? 215. Everybody got that? 215, 215. All right, let us stand, Israel. I hope you all really, truly heard this message today and it gave you some victory. At least give you insight for Satan's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And why do we need preaching? Because y'all chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. We've got to have preaching. That's the way he has ordained it. You've got to have it. Hallelujah. If you want to, I mean, if you ain't a wicked preacher, I man, of course, you've got a death sentence and a condemnation before you. But if you really want to be a righteous, boy, this pulpit is a good place for you. Because it binds you by your words. And everybody be looking too, boy. People be looking and don't even know they're looking. Hallelujah. Maybe that's what we need to do is ordain some of y'all preachers. Uh, uh, uh. Y'all pulling Jeremiah on me now, huh? <laughs> I'm pulling Jeremiah on me now. I get it. Ain't y'all good? Most high y'all. We thank you for all things that we've heard. We pray that these sins seek deep down our hearts. Thank you for giving us the knowledge, the key, the truth, the wisdom. To be able to bind and loose. Not only that, to be able to understand and comprehend what's going on in our minds as well as our conscience, our hearts. Thank you for opening them up. And thank you for giving us the comprehension, the understanding, to give us the victory. Now, the only thing I'm asking is, is Ruach remind us to help us apply all this truth to our lives so we can be overcomers and walk in victory. We thank you for these words of truth. We we'll ever glorify your magnificent name because you alone are worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. And we lift up your name. Thank you for ministering your truth to us. In the magnificent name of Yahshua, hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom, the King is coming.